Thank you very much. Um, dear friends of Gulen and uh, fellow travelers, um, I would like to communicate to you uh, a debate in another small country about the same size as Albania, uh, the Netherlands. It has no mountains, but more people than Albania. Um, in fact, we should be here with two persons. Uh, me as a Catholic counterpart in the debate on Gulen and Dr. Gurkan Cilic, who wrote a doctoral dissertation and who wrote also the major part of the paper that I am presenting. And this is the book uh, he wrote uh, two years ago on the ethics of Fethullah Gulen as a middle road. Uh, I noticed that uh, in the harmony of religions that is suggested by Fethullah Gulen, it's more the ethical question, what we should do, like Mark Webb also insisted, than uh, the question about God. So it's more what human people should do than God. Uh, and here in the... Um, Two pictures below, you can see uh, Gurkan Cilic, who wrote also part of this presentation. Uh, the background of this uh, presentation is in the Dialogue Academy that was established by the Gulen movement in the Netherlands. And two, about one and a half year ago, we had a debate about virtues, about the good qualities of good people. What are virtues? Uh, you can define virtues uh, also in an a-religious, non-religious way. Also non-religious people can be good people. And uh, here below you can see uh, some photographs of a conference at Leiden University that started with the idea of virtues in Greek philosophy with uh, Aristotle, Plato, and in Christianity, this idea of virtues has been developed, but it has been developed even before that also in the Islamic tradition. And um, in the Islamic tradition, uh, well, let me say first a little bit about Dutch society. Dutch society, you see here two statistics. The left one is about church attendance and about being member of a Christian church. Well, the Netherlands is not as atheistic as uh, Albania was uh, under communist rule. But you can see that there is a strong decline in uh, church membership. And on the right side, you see the increase in Muslims from uh, nearly zero in 1970, up to nearly one million in the year 2000. And that is from nearly zero to, at this moment, about 6% of the population. The left statistic should remind us that harmony between people is not only harmony between religions, but that a religious people should be involved too, especially if we debate ethical issues, we should not forget the a religious. Because also non religious people strive for the good, and they are even sometimes more liberal, more easy giving than religious people. In the history of Islam, Ibn Miskawai is a very great name. He was the one who wrote Islamic ethics based on the philosophy of Aristotle. And um, in modern times, Muhammad Arkun, who is a Muslim from Algeria, but who worked for a long time in Paris, 
and he was well known among European Muslims as the advocate of the harmony between humanism, between a secular worldview and Islam. He wrote a book on Ibn Miskawai that was published as Islamic Humanism. So how the refinement of character can promote a, a humanist ideal, secular ethics that is in um, harmony with Christian and with Muslim ethics. For Ibn Miskawai, like for all Greek philosophy, uh, human persons uh, have to strive after virtues. There are three major capacities in humanity. The first is intellect. The second is the heart, the emotions. And three are the passions. And intellect that is represented in knowledge, wisdom. The heart is temperament. And finally, the passions are in courage. And for Aristotle, like also for Ibn Miskawai, a virtue is the middle between two bad uh, vices, between two bad capacities of human being. So um, intelligence is the middle between stupidity and between uh, too much attention for details, um, demagogy, uh, just selecting one uh, wisdom and uh, like nationalism or like uh, health and putting that only central and justice, that is then the balance. And a good person is a balanced people. So not to the one side, not to the other side. Um, Gulen says, that is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. Like you pray, Ikhdina Sirat al-Mustaqim, Sirat al-Azina an amta alayhim, rayrim urdubi alayhim, wala dolin. So the Sirat al-Mustaqim, which is the middle road, uh, between two vices. In the Essex of Al-Ghazali, this medieval system of virtues has been made a little bit more religious. Ibn Miskawai nearly only talks about virtues in the philosophical sense. But Al-Ghazali has made a harmony between Greek philosophy and the ruling of Sharia. And uh, in his Ikhya ul uh, we see the harmony between philosophy and religious law. And Ibn Miskawai, Al-Ghazali, are the two giants of the medieval thinking. And in the dissertation by Gur Kanchilik on Fethullah Gulen, this is put in this uh, yeah, quite a complicated schedule, first look at the head. In the head you see wisdom. But wisdom is between demagogy and stupidity. We see uh, Fethullah Gulen uh, like a modern translation of this uh, rich heritage of the uh, medieval Islamic wisdom that was also uh, uh, translated into the Middle Ages by Thomas Aquinas. And uh, I like to tell, to tell the anecdote of my uh, professor of Islamic studies in uh, the 1960s, uh, a good Jesuit scholar who dreamed of a harmony between Christians and Muslims and who said, well, if all Christians should follow Thomas Aquinas, then there would be good harmony among the Christians. And if all Muslims would follow Ibn Rushd 
or Al Ghazali, then the Muslim community would be in peace as well. And at the same time, the two would be together because they have made the best out of Greek philosophy. Well, then thinking further, what Fethullah Gulen has suggested to us. So how to make this as a feasible, as a practical uh, rule that is through education. And education, uh, well, Fethullah Gulen, like already was said by um, um, in, in the uh, earlier session, he is a preacher. He is a man of action. He wanted to educate, not only in a theoretical model, but he wanted to educate role models, people who are the model for other people and people who are part of a golden generation. And not through more administration, not outside commands, but role models who grow in character, people with self-knowledge in a control, who have a harmony between their ideals and their outward action, no compulsion through politics, but a real uh, golden generation of good character. And that can also be seen um, in the way he took in politics. Uh, and that's also a debate in our society that religion can only be true religion if it is free from politics. So separation between state and religion, that is not only in favor of the state, it's also much in favor of religion. We feel that Gulen is not pietistic in this sense that religion is just for the heart. No, it is also uh, to be active in social activities, not in party politics. And it is active in Mu'amalat, but in Mu'amalat that are interpreted in a quite free way. And we had the debate in the interval that's perhaps the Hanafi background of uh, Fethullah Gulen, that he does not stick too much to all kinds of small practices. Well, wearing the veil, well, that can be beautiful. Wearing not the veil can be practical as well. Uh, you take that free choice. So to conclude, uh, Gulen's middle way is between secular nihilism and religious authoritarianism. We do not need too strong uh, religious authority, especially not in our Dutch society. Uh, that's perhaps one of the decline of institutional religion, that there is too much religious authority. People want to be free, want to be a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and that's an opportunity for a movement like the Gulen movement, who had also quite a lot of Christian supporters who do not obey the all kinds of rulings for um, uh, clothing, for halal food, but who think that the social action of Fethullah Gulen is a very important contribution to our society. So not a sect, not a too loose network eh, where you can just uh, come in and go out without clear direction, but a religious movement with a clear social goal uh, through education, through social action, through solidarity. And um, well, that is a middle way that can be developed by Muslims and Christians alike and I think that's the true middle way uh, that can be accepted and that should be developed more and more in uh, Muslim and in Christian and in mixed societies. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>